Hi, this is JP from Know the Lights of Arkham. Welcome to my initial playthrough of the Scarlet Keys campaign. And we are playing with Humani Jones for this run. Uh, first off, um, I'll show you my deck. So uh, just hopping over to ArkhamDB.com. Okay, and here is my Humani Jones in the Scarlet Keys deck. Uh, I opted to go and try Underworld support for the first time. So uh, with this card I can reduce my deck size a bit to have more constant draw of good cards, not th have that many cards in the deck. But uh, there is a, a turn to it, so I only can make a Highlander deck, so I can include uh, only one copy of each non-weakness or a non-signature card by title. So uh, let's see. Uh, I because Kumani only has uh, intellect of two, and we need to get clues. So I went really heavy for investigating. So of course flashlight. Uh, the signature card lets us do um, basic action. Three different basic actions from the following list in any order: engage, evade, investigate, or move. And we can use uh, our agility instead of intellect for investigating. So that's good. Then, uh, of course, uh, because Kumani uh, starts with 5 experience, we added lockpicks level 1. So that uh, we don't lose them if we get an autofail token or something like that. Then we have a magnifying glass just to boost our intellect up by 1 if we don't get the other cards. I think this will uh, be uh, changed to another card uh, quite soon enough. Uh, then uh, old keyring. This is just because if if we uh, hit a one uh, two one or two shroud location, we can investigate without using agility and uh, just fail on auto fails. Uh, thief's kit. This is an interesting card. You get to investigate with your agility instead of intellect. And if you succeed, you gain a resource, so that, that is uh, good for rogues. Uh, then, uh, with another experience, I opted to take Eon Chart. So, I am playing Taboo, so we can only do basic actions with this. And uh, that is it, but it's still good. This can gives, uh, give us uh, free evades, moves, etc. So, it is a good card still. Uh, lucky cigarette case, we are going to be evading with high agility, so possibly getting good draw with this if I get it in the play. Uh, then I added trench coat just because, well, it is a uh, plus one to your evasion, so that, that is good. So, not the greatest card, but I, I'm probably going to upgrade that to another card. Then we have Leo De Luca, always good for rogues. Lola Santiago with the uh, remaining 3 XP, uh, just so this has good soak and also boosts uh, intellect and agility. Also lets us buy, uh, buy clues with resources, so that is good. This guy is a new card. Well, um, boosts our um, evasion, so. Let's see how that works. Not, not sure. But we have a ton of events, 11 events in the deck. We have I'll take that. It's a new card. Uh, play an item asset from your hand, reducing its cost where access amount you succeeded by. So you play this after you evade a humanoid enemy or successfully investigate. So the more you succeed, the cheaper it is to play. So on an economic card, I'm out of here. Uh, just so if we have a res uh, resign option on the other side of the board, this is a really good card. Uh, backstab, there are some elite enemies we can't defeat with Kumani's own ability. Or that we need to defeat an enemy, so this is one of those cards we can use for that. Uh, breaking and entering, another use agility to get clues card, also evasion. Uh, Faustian Bargain, uh, a staple rogue economic card. Uh, then we have Inter Report, uh, buy off some clues, really good. Uh, kicking the Hornet's Nest, so we uh, 
can uh, get rid of enemies by evading. Uh, so we could just get a clue from a location, get grab an enemy, uh, evade it and get rid of it. And also we get the resources with this. So it's a clue, tech and economy card in one. Uh, pilfer, a costly card, but let's us grab three clues if we hit the location with a lot of clues. Uh, then uh, quick getaway, uh, another evade card. Uh, so if an enemy attacks us, we can attempt to evade the attacking enemy. If you succeed, cancel the enemy's attack. Uh, then uh, we have sneak attack, another tech card for those situations. We need to defeat something. And sneak by uh, resource card for evasion because we are probably doing some evasion. Uh, skill cards, we have three calculated risk. Uh, this um, lets you do actions and then get wild icons for this skill card based on the actions you have done. So combined with Leo De Luca, this is a good card. Nimble lets us move around uh, for free if we succeed in evasion by enough or in a skill test uh, that uses agility. And perception, just so if we have to investigate with our intellect. We have at least one skill card for that. And uh, the random weakness is Atypophobia. So uh, after you fail a skill test, take one horror. So let's not fail the skill test, right? So that is the deck. So uh, 25 cards and that is it. So let's hop over back to the world map and see how the campaign starts. Okay, and we are ready to start globe trotting. So the campaign starts as at Arkham and we are uh, investigating disappearances. Well, uh, people have gone missing, pets have gone missing, uh, cars, even buildings have gone missing, lampposts, etc. Uh, nobody seems to remember that things are getting uh, or are disappearing. So uh, we are basically the only one who notices this and is investigating. But we have uh, uh, hit an end, uh, dead end in our investigation. But uh, we receive a mysterious letter from uh, a detective Flint. So uh, we head to a movie theater and see uh, for a meeting. And because we're playing through solo, we have to go alone. There is an option if you are playing multiplayer that go alone or not. We are going alone. And uh, then Clint tells us that uh, we are not the only ones who have, has noticed these missing things. Uh, he has been noticing the same thing in London and uh, offers to um, combine our investigation and uh, buy us tickets to London. And because we are opportunists, we want to not pay for the trip for ourselves, so we accept the um, co cooperation with Flint. So we will travel from Arkham to London. And here we start our first scenario. So uh, this trip only costs one time on the time counter. Um, whenever I hit something that um, needs to be mentioned uh, on how much time we have spent. I will uh, tell how much time we have spent in the campaign, but so far it's one out of 35 time. So we have 35 time and then we are uh, out of time. So uh, we start in London and the first scenario, it is uh, riddles and rain. So uh, without more uh, talking, let's get started. Okay, and we are ready to start the scenario. So our decision changed our initial chaos back a bit. So we removed one Elder Thin token and added one uh, tablet token to the back. And this, uh, the tablets represent secrecy and the Elder Thin's trust or something like that. But we opted to go secretly uh, along with Flint. So uh, first off, what do we need to do here? So, when it rains, or I mean in London, you uh, 
Patiently await your contact, but none arrives. Inspector Flint or one of his proxies has, was supposed to meet you at a quiet tea house tucked away in a narrow stro- storefront just outside the Tarafalgar Square. Uh, wondering what could have gone wrong and suspecting the worst, you set off to investigate. Pause when this agenda advances, move all doom on it to the next agenda. And uh, the threshold is only two. Uh, clues and cappers. You draw your umbrella, uh, umbrella closer, using it to obscure your identity. Each person you pass is on, on the street could be your contact or be out to get you. Objective as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance before the agenda advances. We need two clues. Well, there are two clues here. There are no other locations. The shroud is one, but uh, rainy London streets uh, gets plus uh, X shroud access the current act number, so it's one, so it's uh, shroud of two. Forced, if there are no clues on rainy London streets, add clues to it until it has one clue per investigator on it, and there is a resign action. So, we need to get these clues advanced before the agenda advances. So, let's draw our opening hand. We get Pilfer. Flashlight, magnifying glass, disguise, and lockpicks. Well, we are keeping lockpicks. And we'll keep the magnifying glass. I think that's good enough of an investigation combo. So we can uh, mulligan the rest three of the other cards. So we get Thieves' Kit. Uh, I'm out of here and kicking the hornet's nest. Okay. And uh, this campaign also introduces uh, these uh, uh, concealed cards. So we have decoys and enemies that have concealed uh, keywords. So I'll tell more about those when we get those enemies. Okay. okay. Uh, that uh, was the mulligan. So first action, we'll play lockpicks. Uh, we'll play Actually, let's not play the lockpicks. I think Thieves Kit is better for our uh, Goals uh, fast action. I play the magnifying glass. No, no use If we lose that we have backups Okay, so we only play that I'll uh, investigate using the, or is this, so this has six supplies on it, just a moment, so I'm immediately using one, so we investigate, and I'm investigating five versus two. And it is a tablet, minus one. If there is a concealed mini card at your location, reveal another chaos token. There isn't. We'll grab one clue. A last action, we'll investigate again. Elder sign. Uh, if there is an, an exhaust enemy at your location, you automatically succeed instead. Oh yeah, and we gain two resources. Uh, because we succeeded in investigating. Okay. That is our first turn. We'll wait for one turn to advance. And we'll go to upkeep. We draw a card. Lucky cigarette case. Nice. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay. And the first middle space, so we add one doom. And counter card for this round is uncovered. Uh, I mean, undercover. Uh, revelation if there are no enemies in the shadows, undercover gains search. Okay, next one seeing shadows. Put seeing shadows into play in your threat area. As you fail a skill test while at the location with the concealed mini card, take one horror. Okay, well, I think we need to get rid of that, but uh, at this point, 
we'll spend the required number of clues as a group and advance in our investigation phase. So we advance. Movement in the dark. You spot the figure on the other side of the street just as bright red blue uh, bus approaches. You are certain whoever was there was staring directly at you. The bus cuts a sweat through the foggy street and when it passes the figure is gone. Perhaps it is just your paranoia at work but it cannot be a coincidence. It must have either been your contact or one of their foes. Perhaps even the reason they are missing stealing yourself into a, any possibility you set off in chase. Put the set aside Kensington Gardens, Westminster Abbey and Big Ben locations into play. The lead investigator draws the set aside red gloved man, enemy and resolves his concealed keyword. Okay. So we get this. Or rather we get uh, the red gloved man. So concealed one per investigator retaliate. And uh, the concealed means that we have to put as many as it says uh, decoys into play alongside with the named card for it. So this goes into the shadows, which is here. These cards are in play, but not an, in any location. Then we get a Big Ben, uh, Kensington Gardens, and Westminster Abbey into play. Then we shuffle these cards. Oh yeah, and there's actually one clue now here. So we shuffle these for a bit. Um, then we have to put these cards to our nearest location without the concealed card. Or to the nearest location from us. And uh, this is the nearest and I'll put this second one into Big Ben. I think so. Okay. Then we read the next act. <clears throat> okay, and this actually advanced. Just double checking. So uh, advance the agenda directly to agenda 2A, do not resolve agenda 1B, so this uh, doom is gone. Then uh, this just goes away. We have figures in the fog, your mind must be playing tricks on you. Misshapen figures dance through the dense London fog whenever the rain lets up. Are these distortions like the one in the photograph Inspector Lee showed you or is it, the, is it your quarry hiding in the mist and gloom force when this agenda advances move all doom on it to the next agenda but uh, we'll try to advance before that then the game is a fool you chase the shadows shrouded by night a shadow shrouded by night it m might as well be a needle in a haystack, but still you search, hoping for any clue that may lead you for, to the truth. Objective, chase down the mysterious figure before the agenda advances. If an investigator engages a red cloth man, advance. Okay. Well, uh, I think first action, we'll just play a uh, lucky cigarette case. Second action, we will investigate here. So now the shroud is three. So I'm investigating five versus three. It is an elder sign, so uh, it is a plus one, but still we succeed. So 
this location gets us extra extra clue. Oh yeah, and we succeeded by a lot, so we'll actually draw a card, Faustian bargain. I think we're set on resource, and we gain a resource from this. Okay. I think last action we'll uh, move to Westminster Abbey. And uh, that is our turn. Oh yeah, we have some locations to connect here. So these are connected. Like so. And uh, just checking, did I forget something? No, we did everything we need to. Okay, and that is the uh, round, no enemies. We go to upkeep, we ready up. We draw a card, perception, and we gain a resource. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add a doom encounter card, but this round is uh, undercover. Okay, so under uh, we test Intellect or Agility 4. If you fail, place a decoy at the location with the most concealed mini cards. Flip it face down and shuffle each concealed mini card at that location. Okay. Well, we're testing 5 versus 4. I'll go. Seven versus four. Minus two. So we don't add any decoys. And that is it. Um, and now we don't have a way to I'm out of here at the end if we are getting into trouble. But it is what it is. So first action, I think it's not worth investigating this location. Or actually uh, we could grab this clue, it's in, it's an easy one, so we commit the perception here. So we are 4 versus 1. Minus 1. We grab this clue. Uh, we get 1 from perception and 1 from uh, the lucky cigarette case. So nimble and quick getaway. So well, that's good. Second action. We'll move to Big Ben. Uh, Big Ben is a force for location with one clue. Uh, free action choose and conceal mini card at Big Ben and or a connecting location and test agility to if you succeed look at the revealed side of the conceal mini card without exposing it. If you fail, take one horror. Well, we are doing that quick action right away. I'm testing 5 versus 2. 0. We'll just check this one. Okay, so we don't want... Uh, so, uh, I can show it because we are the only player. So, decoy, we don't want to spend our time here. So we know the red cloud man is here, but last action, we will investigate using the thieves kit. Uh, we are investigating uh, five versus four. And uh, I'll commit nimble to the test. So we are six versus four. And it is a tablet. And uh, we need to reveal another token. That that is 
bad. So it's a minus one. And uh, elder sign. <laughs> well, uh, we succeed. So we grab this clue. We succeed by. Mm, so it's a plus one, minus one. So we are, we are up by two. So we can move two times. So we'll move here and we'll move here. So two shroud, one clue, uh, victory bot one. After you expose a decoy at Kensington Garden, steal one horror. After you expose an enemy at the Kensington Gardens, take one horror. Okay, one clue here. And that is our turn. No enemy actions will go to upkeep. I'm just checking. We didn't fail any skill tests, so we didn't take any horror. I will draw a card, grappling hook, nice, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom. Uh, the encounter card is uh, pinch in reality peril. You must either choose one, spend one clue, or choose and discard half of the non weakness cards in your hand, rounded up. Can I afford so one, two, three, four, five, six? We have to get rid of three. So magnifying glass can go. Faustian bargain we don't need. And quick getaway is not essential. So we'll keep these three. Yeah. And that is it. First action. We will uh, play. The grappling hook. We will use the grappling hook. We will uh, do the following actions investigate, move, evade. So, we, uh, how to reveal these cards is by fighting, investigating the location, or evading. And we are Doing all of this against the location shroud. So first we. Uh, oh yeah, this is a double action, so that will end our turn. So first we will investigate five versus two. Zero. We grab this clue. Then we move. Then we evade uh, five versus two. Uh, I mean, five versus three. Minus one. And who it is? Well, it's the red glove man. So uh, we engage the red glove man. And when there are no enemies in the shadows. All of these decoys and, uh, will go get removed. So they won't stay in play. Okay, so uh, chase down the mysterious figure before the agenda advances. An investigator engages the Red Glove Man advance. The chase is on. After much toil and pursuit, you finally catch up to the figure you've been chasing. A feeling of vindication washes over you as you spot the red gloves the man we wears. It was no phantom you chased. This is the one you have sought all along. Uh, you corner him in a narrow alleyway, the sheets of rain and fog masking your approach. Several more figures flank the man, a meeting perhaps. To your surprise, uh, he cast an expressionless glance in your direction. Then, fast as a flash of lightning, and gone just as swiftly. A formless shape ducks out of view. Uh, a chunk of a nearby building goes along with it. Now, uh, when you turn to question your quarry about what happened, they have all fled east. You inch forward and examine uh, the part partially excised exci wall covered in an ectoplasmic substance, like the ne negative of an undeveloped photo. Uh, set the red glove man aside out of play. Uh, put 
to set aside Tower Bridge, Tower London locations into play, to shuffle the set aside, Crimson Conspiracy and Outsiders encounter sets into the encounter deck, along with the encounter discard pile, advance the agenda directly to agenda 3A, do not resolve the agenda 2B. So, we advance this. We have the connection. It is clear now that the Inspector Flint's hunches were correct. Uh, the man in the red gloves is not operating alone, and what, and whatever he is up to, it has something to do with the recent vanishings. You could wait to report what you have seen, but by then the man and his cohorts may have already put into motion whatever scheme they are planning. No, you have only one choice. You must find the man with the red gloves at all costs. And the threshold is... Nine, and we put the Tower Bridge location here. Then we get the Tower of London here, and uh, the main gate into the tower is locked and secretly, uh, securely guarded. As an additional cost to enter the Tower of London, investigators in the Tower Bridge must spend two clues per investigator as group. Well, we have plenty of clues at this moment. And... Uh, uh, let's see... So this advanced... Uh, now we still need to... Shuffle these two encounter sets into the encounter deck. Along with the encounter discard pile. So, um, you have eyes in the tower, your gaze turns eastwards in the direction you last saw the man heading. Uh, over the London Bridge lies a famed Tower of London, where even more eyes watch your approach. These belonging to a conspiracy of dark and brooding ravens. For what reason could he be heading there? Objective only investigators at the Tower of London may spend the required number of clues as a group to advance. And uh, we need three clues for this act. Okay. So we actually need five clues to uh, first uh, get tier and advance. But that is our turn. No enemies will go to upkeep. We ready up everything, draw a card, sneak attack, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Oh yeah, and the hook also advanced. Okay, so uh, we add one doom to the agenda. And counter card is pinch in reality. Well, uh, Again, we need to spend one clue or choose and discard half of the cards. I'm choosing to discard half of the cards. We really don't need to kick the hornet's nest. Uh, or this uh, will... I think we're set up with those, so I'm discarding the kick the hornet's nest. We'll keep the sneak attack in hand just in case. And that is it, so... Mm, let's see. Yeah. And we'll just move. Okay, so the tower bridge. Two shroud, one clue. Action, maybe there is another way in. Test. Um, willpower or intellect five. If you succeed, put the set aside traitor's gate location into play. We are not doing that. Uh, Kimani's uh, intellect is 2 and willpower is 3, so not good chances for that. So instead we will use the Thief's Kit to investigate. And we are investigating uh, 5 versus 2.
minus one. We'll grab this clue, we'll gain a resource. Last action, we'll move to the Tower of London. And uh, immediately spend the... Uh, so we have to spend two to enter. Then we spend the three to advance. I'm actually waiting until the next round. Uh, no, there there are false leads and etc. in the deck, so we could lose clues. Uh, he's here! <clears throat> Quickly and cautiously, you follow the figure from a distance. With uh, measured haste, he darts to, a, uh, to and fro inside the ominous tower, searching for something. Finally, while you, you watch from the shadows, the man with the red Los finds what he is looking for, a loose brick along one of the candlelit halls, many columns. He casually rotates the stone back into place with the kind of nonchalance as if he were dealing uh, with a piece of misplaced laundry. To your surprise, a section of the nearby wall rotates in turn, revealing a secret passageway. He ascends into the darkness and you follow in secret. Put the set aside tower prison location into play. Uh, that's the set aside Eye of Raven's Key to the Tower Prison, not controlled by anyone. Move all concealed mini cards in play to the Tower Prison. Draw the set aside Red Club Man enemy and resolve his concealed keeper, putting all of those concealed mini cards into play in the Tower Prison. Okay, so we get Tower Prison. It has the Eye of Raven's. Connected without anybody controlling it. Just place it like this. And uh, we put the uh, Red Glove Man into the shadows up there. And we get this. And one because it has come still one per investigator. So we shuffle these. And this has forced when unconcealed mini card would enter a play anywhere other than Tower Prison, put it into play at Tower Prison instead. Okay, so these two are here. And uh, forced, after you end your turn at the Tower of London, you must either lose two resources or each enemy in the shadows attacks you. Um, we can afford losing some resources, so we'll lose two resources. Caught red-handed, somewhere in these forgotten trips, the man with the red gloves is searching for something, but for what purpose? The red glove man gains parlay, test uh, willpower or intellect 5 to interrogate the red glove man. If you succeed, place one resource on him. Stop the red glove man. From stealing the eye of ravens. If it is defeated or if there are one uh, resource per player uh, on him advanced. So we need to succeed in that kind of test uh, one time. And that is our turn. We ready up. We draw. Uh, yeah, we draw one card, sneak by, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, so we had a Doom. Encounter card for this round is... False lead. Well, good thing we advanced. So, this searches. And searches into Hunting Shadow. Well, uh, Peril Revelation, you must either choose one, spend one clue, or take two damage. We only can take the damage, so we'll take the damage. Lucky we still have plenty of it left. Okay, well, um, I think we will just move. It. Uh, actually, I'll take a bit of a risk here. Uh, no, no, let's do it smartly. So 
I will just do double action to remove the seeing shadows. So, because we are <laughs> staying here for a long time and we don't want to take a lot of horror. So, last action, we'll just move into the tower prison. So, tower prison is four shroud, two clues, a free trigger ability, while an investigator at tower prison is performing a skill test. When one clue, that investigator gets plus two skill value for this test. Forced, when a concealed mini card would enter play anywhere else other than tower prison, put it into play next. Uh, to the tower prison instead. Okay, maybe we get these two clues, then we can try to parlay when we find the re uh, Red Glove Man. But that is our whole turn. No enemy actions will go to upkeep. We draw Pilfer. Great, and we gain a resource. So, uh, this investor uses. Okay, so we are probably using these two to get both of these clues here and at one go that is it but yeah that is that round let's go to the next round well a thought occurred to me also that Manning the Pallet Mass has two health per investigator so we advance if we defeat it and we have sneak attack so uh, we just need to evade that enemy wants. So we don't, uh, well, we want these clues for the victory point. So yeah, we'll figure that out once we get there. But yeah, we add a doom. Encounter card is uh, undercover. Okay, so we test uh, agility four. So five, seven versus four. Ah. Five versus four. Elder sign. So we pass. And uh, okay. Um, first action. We'll investigate using the thieves kit. We discard this if we it runs out of. Okay, uh, we are investigating five versus. We are not using the pilfer. Six versus four. Minus two. Good thing we committed that. So we get one and gain one resource. And we'll do the grappling hook. So we get to do three different basic actions in any order. So we can first investigate, then we can evade. And uh, we can stop there. But if, if not, we can, well, I think that's everything we can do. Okay. So we are first investigating five versus four. Uh, minus one. We don't have two or more clues, so yeah, it's minus one. We grab this clue. That's really good. Next, we'll evade uh, five versus. Mm, five versus four. So I'm just going to use one clue, because we are not doing the parlay thing. Yeah, it is a minus one, because we just spent one clue. So we can flip one of these mini cards, and it is the correct one, so this one goes away. And the Red Glove Man engages us. And last action, well, we have to do engage or move. So we opt to not do anything. Uh, the Red Club Man hits us for one damage and one horror. And that is it. We'll go to the upkeep phase. 
yeah, this this was exhausted, but not not anymore. We draw breaking and entering, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's try to end this game on the next round. Okay, uh, we add a doom. Four of nine. Encounter card is false lead. We we don't want to fail this. Oh damn. Well, uh, yeah, I, I will spend this clue to boost this skill test. So we can't drop a clue. Haha. So testing four versus four. Yeah, uh, we fail, but we don't have a clue to drop. Found a way to not, not lose. Uh, the victory point from here. So, first action. We will evade. I will commit sneak by and breaking and entering. So we gain two resources. We are evading five, six, seven, eight versus five. Minus one. We evade the red cloth man. The last action of the game will be sneak attack, deal two damage to an exhausted enemy at your location. So man in the pallet mask is defeated and goes into the victory display, which is for example over here. And that is game uh, we get to advance. So, uh, if he is defeated, or if he has one or more resources on him, advance, so the plot is foiled. If you defeated the red clod man, uh, the figure reels backwards, grasping at his wound. Something small clatters to the ground, the man says nothing, only glares at you from the darkness. His gloves seem to ripple around his hands, like the disturbed surface of a deep crimson pool. And after a moment, he straightens himself, then blending into the shadows, he, he tips his hat and is gone. Add the red glove man into the victory display resolution 1. So we'll just quickly see uh, what we get from resolution 1. So, a bunch of uh, fluff text which I safe for you to read on your own, but each investigator earns experience equal to the victory x value of each card in the victory display. We got one, two, three, four experience. Uh, choose an investigator to be the bearer of the eye of uh, ravens and update the campaign log accordingly. From now on, whenever a character becomes the bearer of key, keep that key handy to the, for the rest of the campaign as it will begin play attached to that character. In future scenarios, the Eye of Ravens begins play attached to the investigator it is bound to. In your campaign log record, you haven't seen the last of the Red Club Man. Mark one time to your, in your campaign log and proceed to interlude the foundation. So, uh, what does this thing do? Uh, these keys work like uh, when we start play and they are attached to our uh, story asset or uh, our investigator, they start on the shift side, so it is a good effect, but if they uh, are attached to an enemy, like if we would have lost this scenario, it would have been attached to the red block man, it would start on the uh, unstable side. So uh, it starts on the stable side for us and for the bad guys on the unstable side. So on the uh, stable side, during a skill test at your location, uh, the performing investigator sets their base skill value for this test to 6, Flip this key to its unstable side. So this is really good for if we need to pass a um, fight check or a willpower check or a intellect check. So we can just one time be at six with it, and then draw the top card of the encounter deck. Then if an investigator shifted this key, flip it to its stable side. And this is the shifting of these keys is a, a fast triggered ability, so it doesn't take up an action. 
Okay, well, uh, I will read uh, by myself the in interlude, the foundation, um, and in the next uh, video of this series, I will uh, do the globe trotting at the start of the uh, video. We'll see where I traveled. I will read the notes from my campaign log, what happened in each location, what how did it affected our game and the game state, and then we'll play the scenario where I headed up. Because there are a lot of places on the map which don't have a scenario. They have a, a page of text, so it would be jarring to read those texts on camera. So I really uh, hope that if you are following along and uh, maybe read them uh, yourself or save those um, texts and the story uh, more clo closely in those for your own playthrough. But that was the uh, Riddles and Rain scenario from the Scarlet Keys campaign with uh, Kumani Jones. Hope you guys like this playthrough. Look forward to the next one. Thanks for watching and until next time.